Hi, I'm Ansel Combs and here's a video about the coloniality of gender. So I'm from New York City, my mom's side is from Quebec, and my dad's side is from Texas. I'm what you would call a cisgender wasp, a heterosexual, white, Anglo-Saxon Protestant. Even as I write this essay, trying to find a voice feels awkward. For example, I asked my girlfriend if she could help me word some of my thoughts because, you know, she's a female. I began to share my experience of feminism as a white heterosexual man with her. She took a deep breath and said, here we go. I was kind of salty at first, but I get it. What would me, a cisgender wasp, have anything valuable to say about feminism? Take Maria Lugones and her essay on decolonial feminism, for example. If the colonizer was a missing child, then the picture on the back of the milk carton would be of me. Maybe that's why I find decolonial feminism so fascinating. Most of everything I know, myself included, comes from colonialism. Everything. As Maria Lugones suggests, even the way I think about gender. During colonization, class, a social definer, became connected to race. Alternatively, gender, another social identifier, became connected to sex. This binary structure of gender is called the coloniality of gender. In Lugones' own words, a hierarchical, dichotomous distinction between human and non-human was imposed on the colonized in the service of Western man. It was accompanied by other dichotomous hierarchical distinctions, among them that between men and women. This distinction became a mark of the human and a mark of civilization. Only the civilized are men or women. Empowered by this binary interpretation of what it means to be civilized, the rich white man of Europe began colonizing the rest of the world, imposing this dichotomous structure on everything. This structure was a systematic hierarchy, with the Christian white man as master of everything, including gender. You see, with feudalism his old structure, the serfs worked the land and had direct control from it. They were sustained from it, as long as they paid tribute to the Lord. Social expectations weren't so binary and gender was not a huge concern to those that labored. But that's not really how it works today. Gender roles are culturally entrenched and unlike feudalism, the poorest don't even own where they live, much less how they get their food. According to the University of Warwick, the poorest people today have a worse quality of life than a medieval peasant. It all started once the West discovered the New World. Colonialism is just capitalism. It's still about segregating everything down into a category so it can be valued and owned effectively. They classified the native and the slave as non-human and placed them in the same economic category as livestock. And then they classified the white woman as human, as long as she made and raised more white babies. And then this became a burden for the white man. It was his duty to create capital and reproduce. And then the rich white man exported this system all over the world, enriching himself and his race. And he never really thought about it because to him, And it's been 400 years of so-called good business. So where do we go from here? What do we do? How do we change? The answer may be as simple as stop talking and listen. Maria Lugones says the histories of resistance at the colonial difference are where we need to dwell learning about each other. So when you look at things from that perspective, then listen makes a lot more sense. And as I look back at my conversation with my girlfriend, I realized something. I realized that I didn't ask my girlfriend about her concepts of femininity and gender. Instead, I asked her if my concepts of femininity and gender were valid and accurate. So I didn't listen. Me, the white, Anglo-Saxon, Protestant, heterosexual man, after an entire semester in a class about women in film, still somehow managed to make feminism about myself. So I realize that's exactly where the problem is, where the coloniality of gender persists. Lugones says one does not resist the coloniality of gender alone. One resists it from within a way of understanding the world and living in it that is shared and that can understand one's actions, thus providing recognition. So that's what we do. 
that's how we change. I propose that by understanding the world, by understanding our actions within it, and by listening to understand, then we'll finally put an end to the coloniality of gender.